Hello again, SG Beers. I'm Companion Wolf, and this is another tutorial in the Smile Game Builder Tutorials and Showcases series. This video is the first one in a series of tutorials dedicated to all of the control characters available in SGB, such as for inserting variables and other values into messages and text decoration. The latter will be in the follow-up to this video. This was suggested by Jacob in the tutorial suggestion channel in the Discord server, so here it is. Before I begin, as many of you already know, notably in Discord, I was in self-isolation for about a month, notwithstanding that one of those weeks was my holiday anyway. I was symptomatic for sure, and by all accounts and all the accepted symptoms, I probably did have the coronavirus. Now, however, I am on the road to recovery and back on track. It's been a very frustrating, crazy, scary time for all of us, so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who has supported me especially these past few months and I like to think that I in turn have supported others as much as I can. We are in this together especially in this uncertain time. So what are control characters? Control characters are letters, symbols or even words preceded by a backslash to insert variable and string values into message windows. RPG Maker users will already be familiar with this method, the backslash and the control character, to achieve various things. In SGB, there are two types, those used for variables and strings on page 110 of the help file, and those relating to message text, like text decoration, which is on page 116. I'll go through them one at a time in sequence for easier reference with the message text and the text decoration ones in the follow-up video. The first one is to display variables. This is backslash variable or backslash v. You can put numerical values into messages using these two control characters. It doesn't matter which one you use, they'll output the same and do the same thing. Note though that the case is important. It won't work as it should otherwise. When using the full word variable, the V is capitalized. When using the single letter, the V is lowercase. This will work with dialogue, message, and ticker text. So for now, we'll leave that one alone. And then we'll just use the advanced variable box to display a random number, say between 1, 1 and 100. We will then note the variable number, which is 0. And then back in the display, we can actually just let's uh, <coughs> do that for consistency. So then random number, which would be variable 0. The index number is always enclosed in square brackets. And we can do the same thing for the display message. Random number. type variable 0 and once more for the ticker text but this time around I'm going to use the single letter B which is our case and 0 if the make ticker text scroll is unchecked uh, the ticker will always be centered on the screen I'm going to change that background to black just 
to make it clearer. So now for a quick play test. We can talk. A random number is 53 for the dialogue, and it's 53 for the message, and it's 53 for the ticker text. The next one is another control character for variables, and this time it's backslash hash. This one is used for variable names. It's very useful if you have a lot of variables and you can remember a variable's name but not its actual reference number, so you'll have to scroll through until you find it. This time, however, we'll, we'll use a basic variable box to add a random number, add a random value, number up to 30. Uh, this will just add the number to zero each time because the default for valueless num variables is zero and it will generate the number each time you talk to her within that range pretty much from zero to thirty so in the display text we'll keep that as the same but this time around we will replace the variable with a backslash hash and then in the square brackets we will type the name of the variable this is the actual name which is very important because it needs to be exactly as it is put in there if you have any full stops or dashes or other punctuation marks it has to be that and it also if it's capitalized like you have camel text or something, it has to be just like it's displayed there. And then we'll keep these as it is. So when we play test again, random number is one, and then the rest will be one as, as well. I talk to her again just to make sure yeah see this is this is rather than selecting a number between a range all this one does is just adds it to zero and that's correct now one adva one disadvantage of using this control character is if the variable name was then to be renamed you'd also have to change the variable name in each instance in the messages it's important therefore to name all your variables and give them unique variable names that you can remember, not change them halfway through if you're going to use this control character, and that way you will avoid conflicts along the way. Next are the backslash s and backslash dollar control characters, which output strings. These are similar to variables, but the backslash s references the string variables reference number and backslash dollar is for string variable names they work in exactly the same way as previously but instead of using numbers it's just basically text so uh, let's insert a chain uh, we'll just use I don't know we'll just use map ID for that and then we will overwrite it with this is a string um, <coughs> so with the display text we'll just use backslash s and one for the variable and it would be the same thing for this display message backslash one the name of the variable this time around for the for the ticker text we are going to use the dollar so it's backslash dollar and again the exact name 
confused. So this should work as it should. It will display. This is a string in a dialog box and again in a message and again in the ticker text. I will do a short follow up video on string variables to show some of their uses as you know there is so much you can do actually with the string variables. The next is backslash h which displays the hero names or the party members. This uses references in the characters tab of the edit game data. Numbers and names are used so whenever you move the character order by dragging and dropping it will affect the output. Note that it will start at zero an increment per party member by one. And so essentially these in the list are just the same number as it has there but minus one. Now if we have a look at the setup of the starting party, each party member is named with the backslash H control character and their corresponding reference numbers which would be in square brackets. But always remember that the first in the list will be zero. <clears throat> so to test this we can delete that. Um, and then we can put party member 1, which in this case would be H0. That should output Scion. And then we can actually copy and paste this. And put the same thing, but this time put the first position. I'll put, put number one, which would be the second position, and then finally, um, now this is, I'm going to do something different for this in the ticker text. You can actually add member five, but you can put H four or any other character in the character to the list, even if that member is not in the party. This is because um, since you only have can have four members actually in the party at once, these will still display because that is their position in the characters list. I guess this might be useful for those out of party characters. So to play test quickly, it should be um, I don't know what order it should be. Scion is first, uh, that should be party member two, never mind Marie, and then you had number five. Position four would be Eldred. I think I got all of that messed up anyway. Now note that if you were to use the change party order, um, I'm not going to do it here, but if you well I might as well okay now if you were to use the change party order to add or remove positions um, add a character and so on like that the output would be the same because this control character only references the character names in the characters tabs and not the actual party members. So if you're going to do this, you would have to remember their order in the characters tab and then use this accordingly to reference it. I think there probably is a way around for this, but I'll look into that and leave it for another tutorial.
Anyway, also relating to party members is the backslash H. That's a capital H, which apparently displays a character's previous name in case it changes. Um, it would be like this. Uh, say, for instance, that would display Scion's previous name in case it changed. Now, I couldn't get this to work properly. I've never used it expansively. So I'll look into that for a future tutorial once I know how it works and what you know what is going on I'm going to end the tutorial here for now and we'll continue in part two specifically with the message text control characters in the meantime if you like this video give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already hit the bell icon as well to be notified of when I upload new videos although I'm not sure if that entirely works anymore and look out for my new series called Tutorials Extra, which is kind of like bite-sized, small tutorials dedicated to updating my older tutorials and, of course, bringing something new to the table as well. You can also speak to me and other members in the SGB Discord server. Subscribe to my Twitter and Facebook accounts for updates. My Twitter is updated more regularly, much more regularly. If you want to donate, you can through PayPal. You can also support me on subscribe start to gain access to unique content and additional perks. Everything helps and is greatly appreciated. And it goes towards some larger goals and projects. All of the usual links are in the description below. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.